Sorry, I know I said six o'clock, you guys, but I'm getting on right now. Invite your followers. Got a good scope. What's up? God bless you. Invite your followers and your networks. Thank you, Upgrade. To the nations. I'm going to sing for y'all while y'all get y'all followers on here. What up, Ty? Don't you hear you, Ty? Ty, this you, sis? <laughs> Had to come back, kid. It's coming for you. Can't wait to meet you. It's coming for you. What up, twin? Prophet to the nations. Come on, I got a good, a good scope. I know I'm late. I said six o'clock, but I was on a good phone call. And the comeback kid is coming for you. The comeback kid. What's up, me 2015? What up, Angel? You got to meet me one day for sure. For sure. What's up, Georgia? If this your first time, let me know. What's up, y'all? Y'all know I love y'all for real, for real, in real life. I'm just seeing who going who gonna to invite their followers. What's going on, I am Dave? What's up, Style Words? I straight. I enjoy your inbox, woman of God. What's going on, new worship? You might can play this for me. You want a shirt? I got you. Bernice, I love you. I'm going to call you, Bernice. What up, Prophetess Watson? Patricia from Louisiana. God bless you. St. Louis. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give y'all about two more minutes. See who we going to get on here. If this your first time, let me know. Brittany, I am. What up, sis? BYOG, thank you for inviting followers. What's up, Columbus? Toledo, Ohio. First time, I'll go ahead and follow me. Come on, come on. All right, you guys. Look, I told y'all, Kathy Summers, I'm going to shout her out every time. I received my activation when she was in Birmingham. I was on scope. I received my activation, all right? I received that impartation. <laughs> Bad connection. Come on, Australia. Prophet to the nations. I got that passport too, so y'all know I'm legit. What up, first timer? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Silk. What up, Silk? Kenya. It's coming for you. The comeback kid is coming for you. Don't act brand new. All right, y'all. What's up, everybody? So fit. Boom, boom. I'm dabbing you. What up? Keenan, I think that was Keenan. I'm not sure. Welcome, first timer. If you don't know who I am, I'm so fear rough and point guard to profit. All right, dope chick, but holy chick. Come on, somebody. I've been delivered, set free from the spirit of homosexuality. I got my testimony on my website, www.sophiaruffin.com. Hey, Apostle Lance, my Apostle Wong, God bless you. Also, you can catch me on YouTube under Sophia Ruffin. I love you too, Penny. Come on. You already know I love you, Penny. <laughs> so listen you guys my testimony also you can follow me on youtube sophia ruffin or try moses okay uh where he has uh put some videos up as well you guys if this your first time welcome i really like first timers what up cam hey i love cam hey can't wait to wednesday hey hey let me calm down almost bust a cheerleader move y'all know i ain't no cheerleader now i've been delivered but god ain't made me no cheerleader you know what I'm saying? Point guard to profit. Come on, point guard to profit. His and her money, what's going on? He did not make me a cheerleader. So, look, matter of fact, the cheerleaders got on my nerves. They were just in the way. Excuse me if you're a cheerleader, but they were in the way, taking up space while I was trying to hoop all day, point guard to profit. Can you get your shirt? Inbox me. I got you. Oh, Brittany, I am. I'm sorry, sis. Ooh. Brittany, I am. Listen, you guys, this is a good scope today. This is a scope, a, a, a scope. I hope you got some notes, you guys. I know I'll be on here clowning and cutting up. What's up, D-R-N-E-S? Uh, yeah, cheerleaders. They was in my way. I just shot a layup and got an M1, and I'm all, ah, yeah, 
and then the chili to throw on little pom pom things all in your in your face. It just really ruins the moment. You know, it just ruins the moment. <laughs> Cincinnati, I'll be there next month. I'm acting up on here. Hey, B Miguel. Listen, you guys, this is a great scope today. I don't always do a formal scope. Yeah, it's really informal though, for real. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be real deep. But I wanted to <laughs> share with you guys how Michelle J. Miller, that's my girl. Michelle J. She be supporting me. She be rocking with me. She be posting and, and sharing me on Facebook and stuff like that. I love good people. For real, for real, in real life. Women who winning. That's good. God is deaf poet. Come on here. Alexis Mastin. Y'all better follow these people. I'm telling y'all, they dope for real. In real life. But listen, cheerleaders, don't be offended. That wasn't shade. That was just the truth. Y'all be in the way. But anyway. <laughs> Listen, I'll be in Hot Springs, Florida this weekend, you guys. So, if I don't get on scope every day this week, it's because I'm pre uh, preparing for my trip. But, um, hey, Marie Set, Listen, you guys, I want to share with you guys. Hey, Belita, I will see you Friday. Pew 2015, what up, Lightning? Okay, let's get to this. I don't want to hold you guys way long. Hey, Paris, France. Listen, I'm Sophia Ruffin, you guys. Follow me on Facebook, Sophia Ruffin, for more of my story and my testimony uh, to know a little bit about me. Earlier, I did a scope, but I had cut off because I was leaving to go somewhere with my pastor. We 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 uh, had a good time today. And so what ended up happening was I was talking about the power of Periscope and the Oh, man, you going to see Apostle Eckhart? I'm going to see him Wednesday because I'm sure enough going. Cornerstone, I'll be there. Anyway, listen. Uh, I cut off and I was talking about the power of Periscope. So if you did not see my earlier scope, I want you to check it out because I gave a few snippets on how Periscope. AP Callis, thanks, bro. Hey, everybody, I don't block the spam. So as soon as AP Callis send his followers, they cuss me out and they talk about me, but I don't block them. So it's all good. Okay. Hey, Darnell. Um, but anyway, I talked about the power of Periscope and how the power of Periscope and just utilizing technology and being at the right place at the right time doing the right stuff have set me up for a divine encounter with destiny, you guys. Thank you, Kim. Hey, for inviting followers and Steverson921. So the power of Periscope, I'm going to just uh, say this really quick, but when I started Periscope in November, you guys, I was real hesitant and I was afraid. But how many of you know that God will set up strategic opportunities to launch you supernaturally and take you places you cannot physically take yourself? And many people... They get on Periscope and or they're intimidated by Periscope, but I believe that the winds and the current and the portal is open for God to supernaturally launch people for such a time called right now. And so I want to just share how since November, you guys, I was working a nine to five, a nine to five, and I hated my job. You know why? The reason why I hated my job was because I felt like I was investing so much time dealing with issues and dealing with other people's problems 24 seven, which that is a time and place for that. But I did not have time to pursue my dream. And I felt like my time was wasted. And I felt like there was so much more on the inside of me that needed to come out. And so listen, uh, in November, so I was obedient and I got on Periscope and I told you guys, God, he looks at the heart. And so when you are pure and your motives are pure, God will open up doors, uncommon doors and favor and opportunity. I don't know if my phone is frozen, but I'm going to keep talking until it unfreezes. Okay. I don't know what's going on with my phone. Anyway, I'm going to just talk through this. So, so happened, I started off on Periscope, you guys, and I had five to seven faithful followers. And when I have had my five to seven faithful followers, I was one of the most consistent people with my five followers. I never looked at my, my numbers to determine whether or not I was, I was, uh, doing what was right or doing what was wrong. I felt like this was a platform and 
an opportunity for me to share and to express what was on the heart of God and also to have a good time and express my heart. And during that time, Alexis Matson, you guys, scotastic, you got to hear her. She said she just randomly shared me one day, randomly. And she had not even heard me speak. She just shared me. And when she shared me, it right, random, she shared me. And I'm on that prophesying my little heart out about the prophetic winds. And when she shared me, people started following me. And just let's just say, yeah, Cairo's moment. Yeah. And it just launched. And immediately, prophetic random, immediately, I began to just kind of continue to flow. And my heart was never towards the spirit of opportunity. If you get on Periscope, and let's just put this out here. If you get on Periscope with the heart of a spirit of opportunity, you will not have a pure heart and people will know and they will not, they will not be drawn to you. The people are drawn to people real, recognize real. People that's genuinely getting on here, this is my platform, okay? And I was doing this before Periscope. And so what ended up happening is, is that this just opened up another opportunity for me to meet people all over the world and so because I was in the right timing of God you guys it sped things up and God added adrenaline let me talk about adrenaline point God to profit adrenaline rush that is everything adrenaline means that you got a momentum a thrust a speed a tenacity a grace a zeal a passion and an energy to supersede whatever is happening in your current state Hey, Pastor Creel, my mentor, Dr. Creel. And so God added adrenaline to my destiny. The adrenaline of the Lord came upon me and it supernaturally launched me. And so immediately once that happened, you guys, I had a book that was coming out in September. Okay. My best friend just joined Devin Mays. My, my book was set to come out in September. Now, when September came because the adrenaline of the Lord was on me, Okay, yeah, Apostle Eckhart followed me after uh uh Doc Scotastic God that poet followed me. Apostle Eckhart followed me, and of course I did hurdles and flips, but then he shared me one day, and then 24 hours I had like fifteen hundred followers. Why? He shared me and fifteen hundred followers came on. And so it just started progressing, you guys. And so I kept being faithful. And then I uh, shared my testimony. I threw myself out on the limb. I shared with the world that God delivered me from the spirit of homosexuality and perversion. And I started just sharing my story because I felt like somebody needed to hear my story. And, of course, uh, CBN 700 Club was on, on following me on Scope, one of the producers. The producer contacted me. Now, I'm, uh, my story going to be heard all over the world. Point Guard to Profit, the book was set to come out in September. Now, it'll be out before June. Why? Because God added thrust, momentum, and adrenaline upon it. And so, I just want to encourage people that Periscope is, a, is an awesome thing because where many people pay thousands of dollars to be on TV, this is my 9 to 5. This is my television show. Why? I told people, I'm not going to be a drug dealer of selling my books out the trunk of the car. I want people to already be able to say, I want that book. I want that. And so God will literally, he will add uh, adrenaline and momentum to whatever you're doing when you're in the will of God. He will catch many of you up. You feel like you're so far behind or you feel like, you know, you way far behind. God's speed will catch you up. Okay, whatever years you missed out on, I lost many of years dealing with the spirit of perversion and homosexuality. I spent many of years dealing, wasting life and wasting time. But God's speed launched upon my life, superseded and launched me. He will redeem the time, you guys. And so now my book is out, uh, a passport. I've been told for two years to get a passport. I didn't budge. Why? I was settled being a neighborhood prophet. Come on, let's just be real. I wasn't trying to say I'm a prophet to the nations. No, I was a prophet to the neighborhood. <laughs> Listen, for real. And immediately, now, not only am I traveling, but now the doors are open, I'm traveling. And so now, what's supposed to took two months to get a passport, I got it in two weeks. 
Okay, so God will launch you, you guys. 2016 is the year of God launching, leaping, crossing over. Don't you know all the prophets prophesied in 2016? I'm telling you, and you go from the hood to, come on, from the hood to the globe. Now, I'm telling you, I can sing, I'm a prophet to the nations. And I got to tell my people, and the comeback kid is coming for you. Who you coming for? God will add anointing because you got to go get somebody. So anyway, I caught you up to say this. Now, how do, how I wrote a book in 10 days, people are asking me, how in the world did you write a book in 10 days? Let me tell you the secrets, you guys. Number one, I wrote a book and had almost 40,000 words. Okay. And I took my time writing my book because I felt like I got time because of my book coming out in September, then I got enough time to write and maybe in July, I can turn the book in. Now, I took my time weeping and typing and getting it together. Hey, hey, Miss Bianca. Good evening, Monica. And so when I finished writing it, the first book that did not make the cut, the Lord said to me, now that you wrote your book, that's not for the world, that's for you. Really, God? We need to talk. What do you mean? Do it look like I'm interested in writing a journal? Do it look like I'm interested in spending 40,000 words writing a journal? God, look, bro, I had to hire God come all the way. Come back, come, come here, come here, Holy Ghost. You just had me journal? God, hello? Look, I'm like, he said, Sophia, that was your healing. I cannot launch you to the nations and you still got things in you that you need to get out on paper that that's not called for the world. There are some things about your testimony that is not ready for the world. That's your journal. I said, wait a minute. I don't write journals 40,000 words. Why would you have me write 40,000 words in the journal? And he said, will you obey me? Now, I could have added 20,000 more words and sent that to the publisher. I could have done that. I could have done that because I wanted my book out. And you telling me, that's like the book, bro? God, we got to talk about this. What made you think I want to spend uh, all day writing 40,000 words? And 40,000 words is probably about 60 pages, okay? Right, Holy Ghost essay. So I end up dealing with my issues and I got rid of the, I get, right, Kim, hey. I'm like, God, do it look like I just want to be twiddling my thumb, typing a journal and my fingers are Miss Jackson. So anyway, I got rid of the, my book in 10 days. And here's the secret. 10 days, that meant that when you are under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, God, yeah, obedience gave, write my story. The Holy Ghost began, I literally sat on the couch for four days straight. I got up, I got, I happened it is, I would spend hours sitting on the couch writing my book. Half the time, I did not eat, okay? I didn't have time to get up and eat. I didn't have time to get up and do other things. I keep freezing. Do you got, if I come out and come back in, will y'all come back? Let me know. If I come out and come back in, will y'all come back? Y'all gonna come back? Don't leave? Okay. Yes, yes. <sighs> okay, keep going. Yes, don't go do good. Okay, let's see. Keep going. It's not freezing now. Okay, let me get this out. Okay, give me, give me a few hearts though, not too many, a few hearts. Okay, so what ended up happening, you guys, is that when you are designed to do something, the Holy Ghost is going to give you speed and the Holy Ghost is going to anoint you and the Holy Ghost will make you a pen of a ready writer. And so I began to write and I began to type out and I was falling asleep with the computer on my lap. I was falling asleep with a crook in my neck. I was falling asleep and, and I didn't go on an intentional fast 
but I was fasting. God put me on a fast to complete what he had called me to do. And so I had to miss some meals. I wasn't able to hang out and go places. Why? Because I needed something done. And that book was written in 10 days. I had to cut off some conversations. I had to kind of be, be in the face of the Lord. And I let the Holy Ghost do the typing. It was times I would fall asleep at 5 in the morning. And from 5 to 6 in the morning, the Holy, Holy Spirit University, I got the degree. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I was typing. And I was asleep, but my hands will still be on the keyboard. And I was typing. And so that was because the Holy Spirit inspired me. And so I released that same grace upon you guys that the Holy Spirit will inspire you. And that, that maybe what you're writing right now may be your book of deliverance. It's your book of deliverance. But the book God called you to write is going to be that he's going to make you a pen of a ready writer. And so the second thing that happened was... Um, was that, uh, like I said, I went on a fast, I went on a fast, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, it wasn't intentional. I just didn't eat. Number three, if many of you are dealing with what is called writer's block, let me tell you a secret. Here's a secret. I want to show you something really quick. I dealt with writer's block and anytime writer's block happened and I couldn't type, I then did this and I'm going to show you real quick. Hold on. I'm going to show you something, what I did. This is me. I emailed myself, okay? Okay, I showed you that whenever I got writer's block, I emailed, I would email myself, I would take my cell phone and I would talk through my cell phone and my cell phone began to write out what I was saying. And before I knew it, I had three chapters that I didn't type, but actually I spoke it out because many of you have a story and it's easier for you to, you, yeah, voice memos and you can, you can do a whole chapter using voice memo. Okay. And so many of you may not know, you know, you may get tired how to type in writer's block. Yeah, <laughs> magnesium. Writer's block kick in. But I then began to tell my story and I used voice memo. And when I used voice memo, all of a sudden writer's block went away. Because guess what? If somebody call you and tell you to share their story, you can talk and tell your story better than you can type it. And so I began to talk. And guess what I did for all y'all? I am, I'm, I am truly crazy for real i began to imagine my congregation in front of me i literally prayed and i began to imagine that i was ministering to somebody that was that needed deliverance especially when i did my section on um uh, uh, how to minister to someone in homosexuality or whatever. I began to talk it out and I was talking as if I was ministering to other leaders. Yeah. The power of imagination. And I was talking and I mean, before I do it, I hit a flow and that flow was just, just stirring and stirring and stirring. And before I knew it, I had three chapters, three chapters and so the spirit of writer's block may it be broken off your life today because many of you don't type no more right now and you're taking a break why because you got writer's block and so when you're talking it's easier to flow than to type as long as you're typing you're trying to find out what word you saying this word too much and maybe you saying that too much leave that portion for your editor okay don't don't pay for a publisher and you try Trying to edit your book at the same time of you writing your book you just need to get your story out and guess what there's millionaires on this on this call on this periscope right now because you got a story to tell all the hell you've been through somebody needs to hear it okay somebody need to know how did you survive how did you overcome you may say i ain't called to be a prophet i ain't called in the fivefold well guess what you call into the spirit of sonship that means that when you accept christ as your personal savior you become a son of the most high god and so you may not feel like you got a title or you don't know your gift yet but you do know you're a son or a daughter to the most high god so flow out of your son 
sonship flow out of being just a believer. Let the believer's anointing launch you. You don't need a title. Just let the believer's anointing launch you. You think you think I'm you think all the hell you've been through was just for you to tell just a few people your story, the whole earth moans and groans for the sons and daughters of Yahweh to be revealed. The, 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 the earth needs your story. Will you tell it? And so I just wanted to give a few snippets of the secrets. Writer's block and, and using voice memo is the key and the power of imagination. If you can't see yourself preaching to thousands of people or mi millions of people, you know what? Then I don't, I don't know. I was believing. I was seeing the crowd before me and I was flowing and I was prophesying. I was decreeing and declaring. I was speaking against the spirit of homosexuality. I started talking about the rooted issues and I started going there, you guys. And before I knew it, I had three chapters in one day. So people that tell you it's going to take a lifetime or you've been writing a book for 20 years. I break the lazy block off for of you because you are sitting on money. You are sitting on somebody else's destiny. You are the voice that they need. The earth is moaning and groaning for the sons and daughters of Yahweh to be revealed. Will you be revealed today and say, God, use my story. You are going to cause the earth, the whole earth to stop moaning and groaning. It's waiting on you. Okay, and so I want to encourage you get your story out. Listen, I don't care what ministry you go to, they may can stop you from prophesying, they can even stop you from speaking in tongues, they can stop you from hooping and hollering, but they can't stop you from telling your story. They can't tell you, they may say that scripture wrong, you don't know that scripture, you know your story, and that's all you need. I I didn't name my chapters too much. I didn't focus on that. I just flow. And don't speak in a chronological order, okay? Don't go chronological. Well, this happened when I was two. This happened when I was six. This happened when I was 10. It's not a chronological story, okay? Just flow and say, Holy Spirit, make me a pen of a ready writer. Holy Spirit, breathe the Ruach breath upon me and the breath of God will start writing your story. Guess what? After I finish book number one in 10 days, I'm on book number two. And I believe book number two going to be ready in, in 10 days. Listen, God launched me out of my job, a nine to five. I, got, I launched it to entrepreneurship. So I got to be doing something. And I don't want to, I don't want to make you pay for these secrets. I want to just tell you, these are secrets. And, and many of you, I prophesy authors are going to rise up your book. You know what? You might as well start preparing your book party, your book release. You are launching and you are coming forth. How many pages is your first book? It's going to my, my first book is over 60,000 words, which means that in the, in the book, it's going to be about 200 pages, which is going to be a nice size book. But I'm telling y'all, I left a lot of cliffhangers. Let me tell you what that is. Cliffhangers. I want your mouth to be open and say, I want more of her story. So my second book is called After the Altar. After the Altar. People need to know, I told in my first story, the root of homosexuality and where it originated from. And I gave you my story. But my second book is called After the Altar, baby. Come on, somebody. Because after I ran into the power of God, people be thinking that it's over. I'm walking you through After the Altar. My discipleship and how brutal that was and painful. But I had to walk through discipleship to become the prophet I am today. So that book, After the Altar. So the first book, you're going to be like, I want more. That's the whole point. I was setting you up for book number two. Come on. God wants to, you know, if you feel like you ain't got nothing else to do, sit down and write a book. Get your story out. Okay? And I just want to prophesy and release that grace over y'all today. If this blessed you, you guys, give me the thumbs up or give me something to let me know this blessed you. Cam hate getting both. Come on. Come on. <laughs>
Cam, hey, you know what? And you can you can pre-order that early. No, I'm just playing. Follow me on uh, Facebook, you guys, Sophia Ruffin, okay? If you are a first time, can you can you follow me and uh connect with me? All right, you can um follow me on www.sophiaruffin.com uh to share your testimony, booking, or anything like that. You can. <laughs> She's so sweet. Um yeah, I pray this this blessed you. And let me tell you another secret, you guys. Whenever um I did have to get up and go to the store or I had to leave during those 10 days, let me tell you what I did. Your phone can go with you everywhere you go. Some of y'all quit acting like your phone stay at home. Some of y'all don't even go to the bathroom without taking your phone, okay? I'm going to be real personal with y'all. You go to the phone to get on Facebook with your with your uh to the bathroom with your phone. While you in the bathroom, you better put it on voice memo and you can get a whole paragraph out. Don't waste time in the realm of the spirit. Oh, awesome. Y'all think I'm being funny? Listen, listen. If you eating, you better, you better take your book to the table with you and put it on voice memo and talk about it. Don't waste time because I'm telling you, don't waste time because if you don't waste time and you about the father's business, he going to make sure that you are launched and elevated. I don't have time to waste. And look, if I'm on the phone talking to somebody, you better, my best friend, Debbie Mays, always say, uh, you multitasking, you multitasking. Because she know when I shift, I'm typing and talking at the same time. Why? I can't waste time. Why? Because my destiny depends on every minute counts. You might have to cut off some friends that want to suck your energy up unless they your friend that's pushing you and inspiring you cut these jokers off you got a millionaire anointing on you but you hanging around dollar bills i don't want to be around dollar bills no more if you got a dollar bill mentality listen and you want to waste my time clip clip as my girl said okay your family members if you feel like they ain't endorsing and they don't believe in your dream, don't go to the next family function. Stay at home and write your story and, and, and talk about them in your story. <laughs> Come on. I'm just keeping it real. All right, you guys. I pray that bless you. I don't want to be around dollar bills. Yeah, change your tribe. So I, I prophesy. I'm going to prophesy really quick. Um. I'm going to prophesy that the grace will come upon you. God's speed is going to come upon you. Man, I really feel an anointing right now that, that there is. And let your imagination be enlarged. Some of y'all want God to enlarge your territory, your coast, your border. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Many of you are saying, God, enlarge my territory. Well, before he physically enlarges your territory, can you imagine him enlarging your territory in the realm of the spirit? Can you see who he have called you to be in the realm of the spirit? I thank you, God. You are awesome. So, Father, I really a grace and a tsunami wind upon the people of God that's on my uh, scope today. I pray that the that the writer, the pen of a ready writer, will rise up on the inside of them. And Father, that you will give them a grace, you will give them zeal, you will give them an anointing, you will give them dunamis power to complete the story. Father, and I break off of them every lazy spirit, every spirit of writer's block, every distraction, every hindering spirit that's getting. In the way and hindering their flow. I speak to the to the dam that is blocking their rivers from stirring. I speak to it and I command every dam to be broken. I see, I even hear in the realm of the spirit, there's a rushing wind of that's beginning to blow and the rivers are beginning to turn concerning you. I break the dam. I could decree and declare that the dam is broken and there's going to be a free flow and you shall write. You shall write under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare wisdom to come upon the people of God. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to cause their tears to become stories. You're going to cause their years of misery to become resurrected power and life for somebody else. I thank you, Lord that the nets are beginning to break and that there's going to be more than enough. I prophesy that you're raising up authors, you're raising them up. And even Father, it's not going to take all year. It's not going to take three years. I prophesy adrenaline. I, I decree and declare an adrenaline rush to come upon them. 
that's going to thrust them into their destiny. I declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. And I break that dumb, that, that mute and dumb spirit off their life that is say they're not smart enough, they're not wise enough, they don't know enough. May the anointing come upon them with wisdom, knowledge, clarity, and understanding. I break off of them the negative words that have been spoken over their life, over their future, over their destiny. I thank you, Lord, that you are closing their ears to every hater and to every enemy and that you will cause their ears to be open and they will hear you and they will flow and they will write and books and volumes are coming out of their spirit in the name of Jesus. I declare it to be so. And I hear the Lord saying that not only are some of y'all going to write one book, but you, you got volumes. You come in the book of volumes. You got volumes on your life. And I prophesy that not only is your story going to be heard, but documentaries are going to come forth. Movies are going to come forth. Your name is going to be well known as you lift up the name of Jesus. He will cause you to be highlighted. Some of y'all got stories on top of stories. You got volumes of volume anointing upon you. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on here. So, look, volumes. They got mad when you wrote one book. But you got a whole volume coming out. And I even decree and declare right now, somebody somebody on here is real intelligent with words. And I prophesy that you're going to create new words that may an anointing, anointing come upon you. You be like a dictionary. You bring words from the spirit realm. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, there are words that have not even hit the earth yet. And many of you are going to discover new words.